All right, we are continuing. We have now made our text blocking sketch. I'll put this up in the corner. And now I am going to teach you how we can take that JPEG text blocking sketch and turn it into vector black type, right? We're using a program called vector.com. When you open that up, you want to just go to the side here and you're going to say open file. You don't need to log in. You don't need to sign up for anything. You can ignore all of their new features and their AI generators. So new artwork. You can do, actually, I'm going to do open file. You want to open your text blocking sketch. So then you have to find your text blocking sketch. I'm going to find mine nicely organized off of my folder in my assignment. And it can only do online file formats like JPEGs, PNGs. Okay, this is what this vector program looks like. I have the ads blocked. But what's nice is just like Adobe Illustrator, this allows me to create vector forms. And type is incredibly simple. Does not need to be super complicated. And if you need to, you can use the text tool. I'll show you how that works because we haven't used that. So just like in Adobe Illustrator, you have layers. And each time you make a new vector shape, I'll start with just a standard rectangle. Right. Each time you make one, you are able to immediately free transform it, you know, rotate it, tilt it. So if I'm making the in here, you can see the anchor points that make it in the corners. And I can add to that, I can copy and paste Command C, Command V, and then rotate. And then if I select with Shift, multiple paths, Pathfinder options are given to me, like to unite them. And then I can paste another one. Oops, there we go. Set that in. And unite that, holding down shift with the rest. So now I've just made, in whatever the default color and, and border is, I've just made a letter in, in vectors, right? Using the shape tool and just layering some things up. And there's a lot of complex shapes here you probably won't need to use, right? But if I wanted to do something fancy, like maybe I would put a star shape and add that in to the top of my vector. So how would I do that? Again, shift overlapping vector paths and then merge them together. Now, Illustrator gives you properties for your, your vector paths. So does vector.com. It gives you the color fill. So I can choose that color. I'm just going to start with 100% black. And then it also gives you a stroke option, right? And for this stroke option, I want it to be empty. And the way to do that is just, well, I'll show you what the stroke option looks like. If I pick a color, and then I pick a size, you can see that, but I want it to be empty. So I'm just going to turn it off so I can see the vector path clearly. Now, one thing is missing from what we've usually done in cleaning up and designing our vectors. I haven't onion skinned my image. So how can I do that? Well, I can go out of shapes, I can go to layers, I can open up the image, right, which is a raster file, and then on the side properties here, I can take the opacity down. So I wanna take that down probably to about 30%. And then I can lock that layer so I don't accidentally mess with it. My next layer is this one. 
And when I click on my pages or I click on anything, right? All I have to do on any tool, all I have to do to get to where I can see the individual anchor points once I've made something, in this example, I made it with the shape tool. All I have to do is double click on it. And then I can see all these anchor points. Why is that helpful? Well, I can zoom in with Command Plus. And once I can see the anchor points by double clicking, I can simply click on the anchor point to modify it. Right? I can click on it and delete it. It will turn blue once it's selected. And if I want modern, like simple typeface, I just want really clean edges. So these areas where there's multiple anchor points, I just want to delete them. And that's where these different shapes came together. So that they're as clean as possible. Now, I'm not saying my sketch is perfect. And you can see I'm already deviating from it. I thought it might be fun to have this little star highlight. It might also be fun to play with the placement of these anchor points. Whoops. Let's delete one of those. So I can do that just by clicking on it and dragging it. So they kind of fit into the text box idea that you have. And then we have corner tools as well. And this is actually how type designers often work now, just playing around with their vector shapes. So if I wanted to round something out, I can. If I want to round something out, I can. Kind of see how that works to make a customized typeface. I want it to look modern, but it might be interesting if it uses a little bit of this customization. Yeah kind of rounding them out a little bit. Simple enough. Anytime you want to modify it, you click on it, and then you can kind of push shapes around. So I'm going to thin that out a little bit. So now I have an in. How can I see that vector just on its own? I can see it always under layers, where I can turn off my sketch or turn it back on again. If you ever need to fit the whole thing on the screen, you just, if you're zoomed in too much, command zero, just like in Photoshop or in Illustrator. If you want to zoom out, command minus. Command plus zooms in, command minus zooms out, command zero fits it all on screen. Okay, I've done the in. Now let me try the eye. Now the eye is going to have shapes. And when I make one, it will just automatically make it, and then I can modify it from there and rotate it a little bit. If I double-click it, I can see those anchor points, and I can kind of drag them around. And I can decide, okay, I want maybe two edges to be curved. Maybe I want to drag this corner down a little bit. Maybe I want to grow the whole thing. Well, I just click once, don't double click. And this is like the large selection tool in Illustrator. So that just lets me grow it or rotate it, kind of like free transform. Now, this is something that happens in type design a lot. You really want to pay attention to the space between your letter forms. This is called kerning. And you want to pay attention to the angles. Sometimes you want them to be perfectly parallel, the space in between the letters. And sometimes you want to make them really close and uncomfortable, and sometimes you want to make, give them a lot of space. Because I'm going to have a floating uh, head on this lowercase i, I want to give it more space. Okay, the next one, I'm just going to use the ellipse shape for the first time. It's going to start as a circle, but then with one click, I can turn it easily into an ellipse. And then I can play with its angling. Double click it. Then I can play with individual anchor points if I want to. 
Now these anchor points are already curved. So I don't get the cornering option like I did for the rectangle or the square tool. But if I double click and I get those, I can actually play with these curves individually if I want to. And if I hold down command, I can play with one side of the curve. And if I hold down shift, I can play with one side of the curve while matching the angle. And if I hold down shift while moving it all around, I can still get it looking a little balanced without looking, making it look so perfectly regular as that shape. So I wanted, wanted to just tweak it a little bit so it's a little bit more customized. And remember, at any time, I can double click these and move the anchor points around, or I can minimize. Also, if I wanted to add another anchor point, if I wanted to add something to this shape, I can double click and then just click on the path. It's pretty intuitive, and it will create an anchor point. So if I create three of them, that allows me to do something like this. If I click another one and another one and pull out a little star. So maybe this will be kind of my signature on my type, these little star sections. Double click, click on the path, click on the path, and I can bring these out and I can always move them. I am designing type as you watch. All right. And then I can also just click it once, take the whole thing and play with rotating it. That little star shape actually helps with my kerning and I can make it a little bit more dynamic by making it wider on the top, thinner here, especially as it goes to the curve. And I like that a little bit more. Now these are separate. They are not overlapping. They are not merged. So I can use them independently. And I'm often squinting to kind of see what I like. Okay, now I'm going to deviate from my sketch quite a bit because I'm going to try a K. And it might be helpful for me to have my inspiration visible. Because that's the kind of K that TikTok uses. So I can always open that up in preview as well. Just to look at. Go back to vector.com vectr.com and now how can I make a K shape well that's pretty simple right same way I made the in I can overlap a bunch of rectangles but what if I wanted to do this C and what if I didn't have shape tools to do it because there's no easy shape tool to make a C well this is where we go to the drawing tools the pin tool those of you who remember Illustrator, Adobe Illustrator in class, I was a big fan of the pencil tool. The pencil tool in Vector.com is not a great tool. I wish it were, because I love it. And you can draw, you draw with it, but what it does is basically just create an almost infinite number of anchor points. So if I look at my layers, this freehand path tool like they're all kind of disconnected. But this one, if I double click it, you can see all of those anchor points. And I could go in and I can individually delete them and clean it up, but it's just, it's a big pain. So instead, I'm just gonna delete all of these freehand paths, that's the pencil tool. Actually, I'm just gonna do Command Z and command Z them out of existence instead of turning them all off. And the tool I'm going to use instead is the main tool of Illustrator as well. The first one we learned, it's called the pen tool. So with this pen tool, I'm going to click. First, I'm going to make a C and then I'll make a K. I'm going to click, let go, move the cursor, click, let go, move the cursor, then click and drag to get the curve, right? click back on the anchor point I just left. And if I want to be able to do a straight, what I do is I hold down 
آن دیخی.